This week on Media Delta. Konami's Gradius was the first game we looked at during Ranking Rush Mups, the series that spawned Retro Rank Rhapsody, and by extension, the series you are listening to now. Gradius, its spin off Salamander, and its sequel Gradius 2 were among the most famous of Konami's arcade output during the 80s, so it was fitting for them to have created a way for arcade goers in Japan to wrap themselves up in more Gradius content that they can experience at home. Series like Gundam, Macross, and Gunbuster show that you can do animated series about futuristic spaceships well, but can the Vic Viper and Lord British reach the heavens of animated quality that those series can? Let's find out by looking at Salamander, the OVA series. Hello, and welcome to our first episode of Media Delta. Uh, this is going to be fun, I can already tell, because... Uh, it's that fun time whenever someone starts something that you have no idea how it's going to flow, um, but we're going we're gonna to char- start it because we have to start somewhere. Um, and I guess this is a good enough thing to start off with because it's fascinating, but also I don't care if I burn an episode on this. So, but we'll get into that why later. So yes, uh, we are talking about Salamander, um, an OVA, a, a three-part OVA that is based off of the they, I mean, it's based Salamander, so it's more based off of, you know, the arcade game Salamander. Although it also focuses on Gradius 1 and Gradius 2. Um, so that is what you are going to listen to. Uh, three people talk about it. Uh, I am Lola de Puzzle. I have with me two other people who watch this with me and have plenty of things to say about it, I am sure. So um, who's with me here? And let's go in alphabetical order. Hi, my name is Carnival. This was something. Yeah. Also, hi, I'm Torpo, and it was, uh... It was a show that existed. So, yes. Um, this is a three-part, as I mentioned earlier, this is a three-part OVA. Uh, so these were not released on one. Uh, if you're not familiar with the OVA concept, uh, basically, especially in Japan, uh, think of, like, the direct video I believe, is kind of the essentially yeah so it is um stands for original original video animation it is basically a basically mostly anime that came out well straight to video either on vhs or laserdisc at the time although i guess does it i mean that's is that really still a thing anymore sort of to a less extent OVA still exists. yeah they definitely still exist it's Usually for writers for a show, but yeah. So yeah. Usually like DVD releases of a show, they'll have an OVA packed in. Right. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that this was a definitely a popular thing of how to release, um, especially in like the early, late eighties and early nineties. I'd say even earlier than that, but um yeah. Uh you would have basically just oh, hey, here's a VHS or something of this anime. And Konami, in their infinite wisdom, decided to produce one based off of Gradius, or I guess in this case, Salamander. Um, This originally came out in 19... I believe the first episode was released in 1987, uh, which if I take a look here, actually... um, Probably should have looked at this up earlier, but if I do... uh, I want to say that this was actually like very close to the actual release of... Um, so Life Force apparently, or Salamander, I, if you're not familiar with the game, uh, those game, the naming in itself of the arcade game is confusing enough. Um, Salamander, I believe the original release was released in Japan, July 4th, 1986. Um, with the version that was referred to as Life Force coming out the following year in 1987. Uh, so releasing this in 1987 was pretty much hot in the heels of this game's, uh, arcade release. And... Uh, I guess uh, they're like, oh, hey, we could probably get some money off of, hey, people like spaceships, and I bet you can make something interesting with spaceships. Like, how <laughs> how how can you make like a thing <laughs> involving space combat with aliens that are based off of like mutated like 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 turns machine into like organisms? How can you make that boring? <laughs> you can, you but, very much can. But before we get to that, I should point out the. They did get a kind of an interesting kind of crew together for this. So if I take a look here, uh, getting information about this thing's kind of hard, especially in English-speaking territories. 
So from what I have here, um, Salamander, uh, I'm using an, my anime list for this because it's the only <laughs> thing I ha- I can kind of find for this. Um, basically, the first the first OVA was released fe- uh, February 25th of 1987, uh, with the last uh, with the third part of this being released February 25th of 1989. So I guess this got a yearly release. Wow! Imagine having just like a year for each of these. God. Yeah, yeah. Um, so there, there isn't a there is a director listed for this, uh, and that is uh, Isuyuki Toriyumi. Um, and looking at his his um, looking at his kind of not discography, but it's basically his filmography. Um, he, Let's see if I'm trying to take a look at this. Um, he he did actually have some th- interesting things beforehand. Uh, he worked on Gotcha Man. He also worked on several Gotcha Man things. Uh, he worked on... Uh, he was an episode director for the original Speed Racer. Or so for mm-hmm. Mach Go Go Go. Um, he worked on... Uh, let's see what else he did. Something called Dallas. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of these things are look like to be uh, Japan only. Uh, but a more notable release that was done by him was Area 88, which we'll take a look at afterwards. But that's something different. <laughs> <laughs> the more the more interesting credit I would say if, uh, for this is uh, the character designer for this uh, was Haruhiko Miki, uh, Mikimoto, who um, probably is not. Uh, the name is probably not a kind of a familiar name, but some of the work, the works that he did the characters for definitely are, uh, because you have stuff like Macross, uh, aim for, or Gunbuster slash Aim for the Top. You have, um, let's see what else. Uh, he worked on some of the Mobile Suit Gundam stuff. Like he worked on, uh, let's see, Mobile Suit Gundam double, uh, 0080, War in the Pocket. Um, he also worked on a Mobile Suit Gundam Hathaway's Flash, uh, Megazone 23, which I remember. I've heard that name before. Uh, like character designer for like these are actual also big Macross stuff. Like uh, Macross, do you remember Love? Um, I believe the original series. So yeah, he is he's kind of a. If you're going to get a character designer for this, that is not a bad choice. No, it's a pretty good choice, honestly. He's- Character designs were not the problem. <laughs> uh, yeah, and like uh, he apparently did the art for the original releases for the manga based on Gundam, like uh, like he did the manga or the art for the manga adaptations of uh, like the original series of Gundam, uh, Gundam F ninety one, Double Z, uh, Zeta. So yeah, he. D- the character design is definitely the most the strongest bit of this, I would probably say, because uh, there are some interesting designs. Um, but you also have uh, there is a credited for uh, like I don't see a producer in this credits, or actually I do. Um, there is a uh, Yuji Nunukawa who was also a producer on Area Eighty Eight. But also did, let's see, we got, um, going through here. Unfortunately, it looks like a lot of, uh, Kigurami, uh, Orange Road. He did planning for that. Um, let's see what else we got. Uh, planning for Naruto. <laughs> uh, looking at this list. Uh, Flames of Rekka. Really? Wow. Uh, Space Ninja Kashim. He was an episode director. Uh, Yorisa Yatsura. He was a producer on that. And uh, Yu Yu Hakusho. He was a production manager. Um, which uh, is interesting because... Uh, so, I should say, those are kind of the names that are put... In, uh, like, the specific names. Uh, there are some pretty big studio names also assigned to this. Uh, this was produced by Pony Canyon. Which, if you're not familiar with that, was I believe the publishing arm for Fuji TV. Um, so they are a pretty big name in Japan. Uh, the s- animation studio behind this was, in fact, Studio Perio, or how do you pronounce that? I can never. I see it's a word that you see but never hear pronounced. 
Uh, but yeah, that is a pretty big animation studio. Um, so you have that. Uh, that is kind of your cast uh, or your production side. Uh, but uh, one other thing uh, that is also should point out before we actually get into the actual cast of characters uh, is the music. Um, they don't list any sort of musician uh, with the exception of there is a theme that plays throughout the credits for all three episodes that is the same. Uh, it is a song called I Remember You by Yasuhiko uh, Shigemura, um, who I there's nothing listing what else they've done. Uh, it doesn't matter. That song is too good for the show. Holy shit. Which uh, yeah. we are probably early enough in that I can actually... Let's, let's listen to it for a little bit. So yeah, this is what plays throughout the credits for all three episodes. Uh, it is an 80s-ass 80s song. Those fucking 80s drums, holy shit. Yeah. Yeah, it is... It is I would not call that a good song. It is good for the OVA. It is exactly where it needs to be. Um, so, that is... Whoa, whoa, whoa. The OVA makes the song better by comparison. That is true. Um, uh, I should also mention, since um, just in general about the music, uh, there might be a reason why the music is not credited, because, you know, the Gradius series is a series that is known for its fantastic music. And even in, like, the games that it's based off of, Gradius 1, 2, and Salamander had some pretty good songs in it. Uh, there are remixes of game music in there. Um, but it is the most anemic renditions of some fantastic songs that I've ever heard. I think there is one good rendition in like the third episode. There yeah, is a, the third episode. <laughs> there is a good rendition of the song "The Final Enemy" uh, that is okay. Um, yeah, but otherwise, yeah, they're really not particularly great, and the rest of the music is forgettable. Incredibly, it is like if you heard the the boss music from Salamander being done on a Casio keyboard. Like it sounds like it is the same has the same power behind it as uh, if you ever have gotten like a like a Casio keyboard and it has like the built in versions of pop songs. Is it about as good a quality as that? Well, I was gonna say like like the the non gradius music like the the stuff that isn't like an arrangement. Was this weird kind of like almost off-brand public domain? Oh, yeah. right. Yeah. Because it's like, it we're is. listening to it, and it's like, okay, is this going to go into like Mars or is this going to go into lot Mar Like, there is a really good section in uh, episode three where you, like, you could really tell they want to play Marseille, uh, La Marseillaise. Uh, I think that's how you pronounce it. Like the France, the French national anthem. But it it's like, it gets so close like, it is painful to listen to in some sense, because it's your brain doing the trick. It's like, oh, I know the rest of how this is going to go, and it just completely goes in the opposite direction. Like, in a very off-putting way. Yeah, it's it's not particularly good. Yeah. Um, it is almost frustrating, in a way. Um, because there are OVAs that I've seen that have used in-game music pretty well, um, but also those have uh, more... Budget. Well, they also get the people the who did. They also have the people who did the music in the game also do the music in the show. Yeah, I was gonna say the problem with this wasn't budget or talent. It's just somewhere along the way somebody fucked up and kept fucking up. Uh, yeah, I, I could almost guarantee you the budget was probably a concern though. Yeah, um, I, I'm just saying, the like budget. the issue. Yeah, 
all the budget went to the third episode, so... Yes. Which is why it's the best, but... Yes, we'll get into those, because now, before we get into the actual episode proper, we should probably discuss who the characters are uh, for the show. Oh, um, God. So just a basic synopsis of what this is, is that um, there are essentially two planets. It, there, I mean, there's multiple planets in the solar system, but there are two planets that get particular mention. Uh, that being the planet Lattice and the planet, planet Gradius, of which, if you're not familiar with the, the lore that is in Gradius, uh, Gradius is, in fact, a planet. Uh, that is where it gets its name from, or the, the game gets its name from. Um, Gradius was the um, basically the victim of an attack of a myth, or basically a kind of race of alien called the Bacterian. Uh, the Bacterian, they're, what they... Their kind of gimmick is is that they can take anything they can take anything and take make it organic, uh, machine like crystals, anything they can kind of turn into this meat, which is why you see meat levels a lot in Gradius. Um, but uh, the residents of Lata are um, basically the residents of Latus and Gradius are basically our heroes for this thing. Um, so. Basically representing Lattice, and he's kind of the main focus, uh, especially since that is what the planet that Salamander is based off of, um, is the person they just refer to as Lord British um, in the game, uh, like in, in the actual game, uh, Salamander and, and Life Force. Lord British is the name of the ship, just to point out, it is the red ship that, um, especially if you see it in like later Gradius games, like say Gradius Gaiden, uh, it is basically the game that has the weapons that were introduced in Salamander, like, say, the Ripple Laser, which you don't see in this at all. You don't see a whole lot of this at all, but anyway. Um, and yeah, it just ends up becoming second player, but yeah. Uh, yeah, so they just call the guy who controls it Lord British. Uh, he is this... Feels weird. <laughs> yeah, especially since... Weird, especially because if you were thinking about that's where it got the name Lord British is oh, I would say 99% likely that that is a reference to Richard Garriott and the Ultima series. But anyway, that is a side thing. Uh, the guy we're taking that we are talking about does not look anything like Lord British uh, or like Richard Garriott. Uh, he is this tall, blondish kind of foppish dude. Very um, handsome anime boy. Yes. Um, yeah, so he is also kind of an idiot. Um, but he is basically, I think he's also meant to be a prince of the current ruler of... Um, yeah, they, they even Lattice. call him Prince British at some point. Uh, also to uh, note, he is voice acted. Uh, this is this only guy Japanese dub for some reason. I don't know why they did not decide to bring it over here. Um, yeah, weird that. Yeah, so uh, the voice actor for him is Hirotaka, Su uh, Suz Hirotaka Suzuki. Um, he does, that is probably the, I think he's one of the more notable uh, voice actors that are in this bunch. Uh, he, if I'm looking through his kind of voice acting list, he worked, he was the character uh, Kojiro Horyuga in Captain Tsubasa. I guess the original release of that. Um, he is also Tension Han, and let's see, I, yeah, mostly Tension Han in Dragon Ball. Uh, he um, was also in his character Shashi in the second season of Hokuto no Ken, um, and he was a some supporting characters in Cross. Uh, the most notable thing that he is has done. Uh, is he is he is the character who voiced Bright Noah in Mobile Suit Gundam? Wow, that's certainly a jump from competence to incompetence. Yes. Um. So yes, uh, that is kind of what he is known for voicing, or some other things. Uh, he and I can't really think. Oh, uh, looks like he voiced a character in Saint Seiya. He also voiced a character in Ranma One Half. Uh, unfortunately, it's a character that I'm not super familiar with, but yes, that is also what he has done. Um, and basically, Lord British gets into trouble, and when he gets into trouble, he needs help from the the a trio of of heroes from uh, Gradius, which helped with their original attack. 
Uh, the kind of the leader of the bunch is this you know 80s as well. OVA character, Dan, who is basically Hero protagonist. Pretty much. <laughs> uh, he is yep. your medium height, brown haired. Uh, he was red, actually. That oh, was red. Red. Yeah, it was red. Yeah. But anyway, he looks like an RPG protagonist. Uh, he is voiced by, um, let's see, Koji Sujitani. Uh, um, looking through here, uh, not a whole lot of these look familiar. -er. He did all. Thank you for the bits. Anime Hero Standard Template Number One. Yes. Um, so we also have. Let's see. What else did he did? Uh, he was. Oh, he was Mikor uh, Miroku in Inuyasha. Apparently. Fuck off. Um. I hate that I'm recognizing names now. Uh. He, like a lot of these, I'm kind of sort of familiar with. Um, oh, he voiced Ryu in Street Fighter 2 V. Uh, and. Oh man, that must have been a hard roll. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, he. Uh, also, apparently, he did the theme song for Otaku, uh, Otaku no Video. Which, sure. That's just a side bit yeah, trivia. Yeah, okay. Um, but yes, Dan is essentially, yeah, I mean, that's kind of all you can really say about him. He's your standard 80s anime protagonist. Um, he has all the personality of one, too. Yes. Uh, getting into weird romantic side, or like, fixing up okay, no, with... I like that one because it was actually, like, one of the few good pieces of writing. Yes. Um... But naturally, if this is an 80s OVA like that, um, we have to have our spunky female protagonist, and that is in the that uh, is done by the character Stephanie McBain. Who I just is, kept referring to her as Nadia the entire time because yeah, she, she looks like an off-brand Nadia. Yeah, she looks like an off-brand Nadia. That's basically what she is. <laughs> to uh, be she, fair, Stephanie was probably the best character in this entire thing. Yes, yes. she definitely was. Uh, um, we will get into the more details in episode two, but she is the actual. She is actually um, the daughter of the former president of Planet Radius, so she is part nobility, I think, something like that. Oh, from at least a political family. Yeah. Yes, uh, she is voiced by um, uh, Noriko Hidaka. Um, looking through her list, um, let's see. She voices Miwa Yamada in Cheese Sweet Home. Um, she... Uh, oh, yes, yeah, she is... Speaking of Nadia, uh, she is actually the voice of Jean from uh, Nadia's Secret of Blue Water. Uh, I feel like you went over this when we were watching the actual OVA because you were so bored. Yes. Yes, we'll get to that, but yes. Um... Also interesting because she also voices the main protagonist of a um, from a OVA or not an OVA but a show called uh, Dodge Donpai, um basically Dodge Donpai, which uh, actually got a game uh, by Sunsoft. Which so we might actually cover that in the future. Um, looking through this, if I see anything else, uh, she has some she and she's getting recent roles. She's in does a supporting role in uh, Little Witch Academia. Oh, that's um, nice. I'm um, going through here. Um, to do that is. Oh yes, she's also the voice of Akane in uh, Rama One Half. Um. Okay. Hmm. Here I see. Yeah, that that's kind of her main stuff. <gasps> yeah. So yeah, uh, that is Stephanie, and also the third. We have the third protagonist, who is basically who is named Evie, Eddie Evan, who is basically wearing. Is it a just a vest or is it a jacket? I'm pretty sure it's a vest. Yeah, it's like just wears this red red vest and has like he looks like the friend. Like he is basically the exact person you think of. Like if you see it, it's like oh yeah, I can tell that's the friend of the protagonist. Or I like, can tell it's a friend who's gonna die. Yes, uh, that is something that happens. Yes. Um, he also delivers the single best line in the entire OVA. Which we'll get that for 
when we get to episode two. That is probably the key point of that thing. Um, so there's also another character that uh, is also very important that shows up later, and her name is Paula, or Paul, or it's just Paula that is pronounced there. Uh, her voice actress is Sumi. Let's see, her voice actress is Sumi Shimamoto. Um, looking through her list, uh, I don't see anything sticking out. Oh. Actually, I do see one thing. Uh, she is the voice of Clarice in the Castle of Cagliostro, the loop on the third movie. Also, wait. Oh! Also voices, uh, I think... Yes, that's, uh, I believe that is Konata's mom from Lucky Star, Konata Izumi. Um, just going through here. Uh, God, I uh, wish we could have watched Castle of Cagliostro instead. I mean, we will get to that at some point because there is a video game that is very much based on it. It's so good. Yes. So yeah, uh, that is Paula. She is basically a mysterious character that we will talk about in episode two. So yes, uh, there is kind of your a very generic kind of plot summary, or not plot summary, but basically here's your kind of your basic what you need to know. So now it is time to actually get into the actual content itself. Uh, So uh, this is broken up into three episodes. Uh, Each one of each one of the episodes is based on a different game, um, with the first one being based on Salamander, which I guess is why they are referred to as like this entire series is referred to as Salamander. Um, So this kind of opens up with. Basically, that you see a scene that is out in space, um, and they are looking at something that is what they found that is orbiting the planet Lattice, uh, and it is what they refer to as a space obelisk, which sounds very friendly. Um, also, I, sh- I should point out that uh, the opening for all three of these episodes is a panning shot of essentially what is the third boss from Salamander. It is the actual dragon Salamander, which is basically this giant snake. Also, the episodes are not in chronological order. That is also true. Uh, this is essentially the second episode chrono- in chronological order. Uh, also, so they- please tell them what the obelisk is. It's a, it's a Moe statue. They just of refer course to it is. They refer to it as a space obelisk, but it's 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 a Moe statue. It's a giant like obsidian looking Moe statue that they find in space, uh, and they eventually bring it down to the planet itself. Um, and when we bring it down to the planet. Uh, it is more when we get introduced to Lord British. Um, Lord, yeah, it is. The intro is basically 2001 when they find the monolith. Um, except it's a fucking Moai head. Except it's a Moai head. And they bring it down to the planet and they show it off in the city, or the main city that Lord British is in. Uh, but of course, since uh, this is uh, an OVA in which they need to spend 50 minutes of time instead of 10 minutes just doing the, the spacey fighty stuff. Um, they have to have a bit of fun anime stuff in the fact that Lord British uh, does not have someone to rule the, f- the throne with him. So they are worried about him eventually finding a girlfriend. Have kids. We need an heir. Don't uh, you know how this works? Crusader I- King style. And I have a note here uh, in my notes that says Lord British is a basic bitch because during the, the intro bit when they're talking about, oh, hey, why don't you meet uh, go to a lady from this planet? And he says, I believe the line is essentially, I have no interest in women who have pointed ears or tails. Yeah, that's right. He's a fucking coward. Thank you for reminding me. <laughs> yes. So basically, there is a subplot of, oh, he doesn't have someone to rule the throne with him. So... Yeah, uh, expect fun stuff with that later on. Um, See, also they're doing that. uh, They do the thing that you shouldn't do. If if you're referring to something as a giant space obelisk, uh, don't touch it. Um, So wasn't it like splintered in two too? Yeah, they break it. Oh no, 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 that's that's why it's two. Yes, because they touched it, and (laughs) go figure that the giant thing in space. is actually a calling sign to uh, the bacterian. So they bring it in, and it's like they cause the bacterian to flood to lattice. And basically, bad things start happening. There are floods, 
there are just general bad stuff keeps on happening. And here's the thing. The fucking court just, the court mage is like, oh shit, there's a giant prophecy about what happens if this thing got fucked up. And it's like, why do you not lead with this? Yeah, it's like, it's yeah. It's fine. They- there's like this, there's a wizard for some reason also. <laughs> He's got a sweet wizard hat that would break your fucking neck. <laughs> Yeah, it's like he has like a, a two-sided jester head. It's like um what's it's really the, unbalanced. It's just all facing forward. What's the, what's the mythical creature that like the snake creature that has the two twin tails? Is it Hephaestus? What? You like, mean the, the the Greek thing? The Greek thing with two ten, twin tails. I I forgot it's like a snake that it's like a, almost like a gorgon that has like two tails. I I can't remember. But it's a tail that it's like the hat hat that looks like that. Uh also, this is episode one, mind you. We are just talking about episode one. Yes. Um Yeah, this is all episode one. So they sent like they're like, Oh hey, it's the bacterian, they're coming now. And basically Lord Brothers is like, Oh, just send the army. Uh, they'll be fine. Uh and lo and behold, they get smoked. Like really badly. Um so uh, naturally, when they do that, it's like, oh, I guess we have to surrender to this. And then someone mentions, oh, hey, Gradius had the same problem earlier. So why don't we get some heroes from there? Or it's like the people who fought there. Um, so, yeah, basically, they call in the three heroes from Gradius. Um, so uh, that is where Dan, Eddie, and um, Stephanie are introduced. And basically, they're like, Oh hey, you don't have any idea what you're dealing with. Um you know like yeah, you got to actually go and um deal with this and like there is a major um bacterian fighter, I believe, or something like that. Uh basically like, how salamander. do y'all feel about meat? Yeah, like you have to go to the salamander and kill it because that is the thing that is causing your plan to be destroyed. Um and that is like they do there's like probably about 20 minutes of techno babble about like what this thing is maybe not 20 yeah, i don't minutes, think we covered it but basically the bacterians turn planets into meat yeah uh that or that is definitely how they show it in the thing more in detail in the second episode but in this one they're like oh yeah they, they basically turn things into meat um and that is when they decide like oh i guess we got to go do this ourselves and they fly uh both or all dan eddie like all four of them have their own space fighter with the lord british having you know the lord british essentially but the other well, greatest kids all have vic vipers but yeah yep. yep they have vic vipers they all look the same um but yeah considering that the vic viper is more of a i don't know if it's a production model but it is essentially just a ship or a type of ship um so yeah they go and like, oh, we got to go destroy this thing. Uh, but not before we also realize that Eddie uh, has some slight issues with um, the way, uh, like, some slight hang-ups about, uh, I believe, the nobility and all that. Uh, because it turns out that Eddie uh, is not actually from Gradius. Or he is, I believe, like, he's like a colonist or something like that, isn't he? Uh, I thought he was exiled nobility. Yeah, he was exiled nobility from uh, from Lattice. Who is his dad and them just showed up at Gradius and they took him in. Yeah. Right. Was it? I thought it had like a different name, but I forgot. I did not write no, it. No, it's from a different planet, but yeah, they were exiled nobility and Gradius took him in. Yes. Um, so, yeah. Uh, so he has slight hangups with Lord British and like working with the other two to help with Lattice because it's like, yeah. They could deal with their own stuff. But anyway. Um, also, go. we learned that Lord British is incredibly easy. Yes. They, he d- it does not take him much to kind of, uh, like... First yeah. sight. Yeah. Um, so, yes. You can you can see the what they're going to do with him and Stephanie later on. Or you can already see what it's going to cover. Um, so, uh, with that, they decide... Oh, or they were like, oh, let's go fly... Uh, Fly to fly to Salamander and go and go deal with this thing, um, in which you have 
this is a probably by the way these episodes each are about maybe 53 minutes long oh, this is probably at about the 40 like 42 minute mark so it this yeah, ep- it's literally 40 minutes of talking including showing their plan which is literally just a sketch of the level layout yeah it from is the game it is straight up the like they took like the scans of the the level one of salamander like if you remember it's like full on with the teeth coming out of the ground and like all that like it is just straight up the i i would not be surprised if they got like the um like the concept art for what when they were making the actual game to just do this and just scan it in and like oh here there's your scan there uh and that is about as accurate to the game as this game this thing's ever going to get uh, but anyway uh yeah they go to salamander and you have actual action things to actually start to happen there is some okay fight scenes that basically you're like, oh, hey, there's a, a ship from Gradius. Oh, it just got shot by the Vic Viper. Uh, up until they get to kind of the center of this planet, uh, in which they actually had the fight with the Salamander. And lo and behold, their weapons do not do anything to the Salamander. And also, um, uh, yeah, uh, they're like, oh, hey, we can't do anything w- with this. Also, Eddie at some point kind of flies off. Because it's like, oh, you guys aren't going to do anything with this, so uh, I'm just going to leave. Uh, but at a cru- crucial point, uh, he just comes back for no reason. He's like, oh, yeah, um, uh, yeah, you have to kill it from the inside. Uh, I'm just going to kill myself. Yep. And bye, Eddie. Yeah, he flies into yeah, the cell. die. Yeah, he just flies in the salamander and just kills it for them. Also, the salamander kind of explodes rather gorily than I was kind of expecting. To be fair, he got crushed pretty graphically at first. Yeah, he did. And then the, the salamander exploded and there's intestines everywhere. But it's not, near, oddly enough, not nearly as bad as what we'll see later. Uh, but anyway, that is how episode two or episode one ends is that they all fly back and it's like, oh, hey, Eddie, that that was a that was a good thing that he did. Uh, we need to kind of honor him in some way. And that, that's and just then the, they don't. Yeah, and then they don't. And then that's the end of episode one. Um, Yeah, that, that's the end of episode one. It was uh, I guess, bad. It was boring. I, I guess we'll kind of do a cover of the entire series at first, or once we finish the other episodes. So with that, uh, that brings us to episode two, uh, which is referred to as, for some reason, Salamander Basic Saga, Paula's, amb- or Paula's Meditation. Like, it's referred to as Salamander it's Saga. One. Yeah, it's basically Greatest One. Uh, so, um, this episode starts out much like. Actually, it starts out with um, a uh, basically Stephanie's father doing a narration of what he's found about the Bacterian uh, in a cassette player in the future. Because it's always great when you see something recorded from a time. It's like, oh, yeah, this technology is going to exist forever. Um,. But then all of a sudden, uh, the ship that he's on disappears. Uh, And that brings us to basically a search party that is consisting of our three trio uh, or our trio of heroes from Gradius. Um, It basically turns it into the opening scene from Alien in which they're basically in the suits. They're just kind of looking into a what is essentially a derelict ship because there is a search party being uh, that it was put out for Stephanie's father because of how... uh, related she was to the kind of the high ups in Gradius. Um, so yeah, uh, then they basically go in, they're all in spaceships or like spacesuits, like trying to go through a derelict thing. They find a, a they're going through a dere- yeah, a derelict spaceship and they find sleeping pods that have like these weird alien creatures in them. Uh, and except for they kind of come across one particular spaceship or a uh, space pod. Uh, that for some reason has a human woman in it. Like I don't. I like how they just completely gloss over that. She got green hair. Yeah, she's got green hair. Uh, her name is Paula. That's, that's why they brought her in. That's why. Yeah, but like weird how you have one human and all these really like contra-looking aliens. She's also got a fuck ton of forehead. 
everyone has a ton of forehead in this everyone show. does yeah so basically they try to do 80s like poofy hairstyles and that would be fine but they didn't understand how hairlines work so everyone actually had really high foreheads yeah so, does it really mean does it, does it mean they have that when it's like standard across maybe that's just what the 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 humans of gradius and, and lattice just developed as over years of evolution just that's just the normal baseline there Real fucking deep, my dude. Let's move on. Yeah. Yeah, they're actually Metroids. <laughs> um, oh, God. Um, so, yeah, uh, they br- they find Paula and bring her in. And basically, uh, they're like, oh, hey, I am. My planet was destroyed by the bacteria. And I can uh, I can uh, I'm also a psychic and I can uh, go and kind of telekinetically uh, reach out and find out where the bacteria are because when they attacked my planet, I was able to kind of reach or like figure out what was going on with them. Um, which if that did not send signals to you at some point, uh, you need to watch more OVAs. I mean, to be fair, this entire time it was pretty much only Eddie who spent time with her uh, always talking to her. He even spilled his life story that bit about being an exiled noble, I think. Yep. Uh, to try and get to, to get relate to her. Uh, and on top of that, she meditates in a really weird, uncomfortable position. Um, yeah, it's, but overall, yeah, it's like, she's doing like the, um, like not the Lotus pose, but like the cross legged kind of thing where you're just sitting down, but also in the, like one of her legs, like also like in a V shape. And she's like twisting a bit too. It's, it's really weird. Yeah. Um, so yeah, basically she does it. She basically is like, oh, Hey, I, I can find where their, um, their kind of their headquarters are. So basically they're like, oh, Hey, if you go here, um, you can find where their headquarters are. Uh, Also, she explains what the, um, like how more in detail, how the bacteria work. Um, and I just have a note here. Uh, that is also true of this scene where they discuss where, like, how the bacteria work, and also when you get to the planet. Uh, the the note is just, man, this episode is grody. Uh, there is a lot yeah. of this is the meat episode. Meat. Yeah, there's a lot of meat and pus too. Mm, it, yeah. it it was very unsettling to watch. Um, and maybe for you. Yeah, yeah, I, I kind of blurred. <laughs> yeah, I I kind of was just listening to it at a certain point. But um, yeah. Meat bone. So they kind of do a, a a recon mission to the planet, um, uh, but unfortunately, when the uh, the th- it's the trio that inevitably gets uh, does the recon mission. Uh, however, at some point, uh, basically the bacterians get a little bit too close to them, and Eddie engages in a fight with them, um, which they end up winning, so they end up living. Uh, however. You have the fun thing about any military fiction thing where you got that uh, lovely space bureaucracy thing of like, oh, hey, you didn't follow the exact rules of engagement. So uh, we're going to demote you even though you kind of saved everyone's life. So Eddie receives a demotion. of I forgot exactly where, like of what, but he is no longer at the rank he was, uh, which means when he does the next mission, uh, he is not to be a part of that. Like when they go in and actually attack uh, the planet, the planet. I believe they refer to it as Planet Bacterian. Um, so uh, aren't they attacking? Mm, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because they start. Because they we'll get to that. But they start off with just like, oh, let's just attack the planet, which is basically a death wish. Um, but then uh, Paula receives or the thing all the time that this is happening. Stephanie is also getting voices what in her head that sound like a lot like her father. Uh, so basically her father is talking to her telepathically um, basically saying hey don't listen to what they're saying you actually need to go find me uh, I am in this fortress in space I forgot space exactly. yeah so uh, all while that they're trying to go f- to planet Gradius the earth planet Bacterian they're go- uh, they actually need to go to the space fortress according to the voice in uh, Stephanie's head um, so while, um, while Eddie and well, not Eddie, uh, while Dan and Stephanie are actually engaged in this fight, going to planet, uh, bacterian, uh, Eddie decides to hang out more with Paula. 
and Paula does more meditation and realizes that she has a kind of a vision. It's like, oh, can you show me this planet Gradius kind of thing? And is like, oh, I, I kind of have this vision of this thing that's out in the desert. Uh, so they kind of take their Vic Viper, or Eddie takes her in his Vic Viper over to this desert area of Gradius and finds out that there is a Opolis there. There is a Moai head in there. Just chilling. Yeah. It, it's like, it is the one thing in this complete deserted desert. Well, obviously it's a desert, but anyway. Um, yeah, and there, and the thing is, is that when Paula tries to get close to the obelisk, it tries to, like, it repels her. It basically she's like, oh, this thing must be evil. Uh, this thing must be attracted to the bacterian. Uh, you should destroy this. That's, that's happening to the side. But then, uh, going back to Dan and Stephanie, uh, they kind of realize, like, Oh, these voices actually sound make a lot more sense than what the our intel that we have to go fight, go to fight the bacteria at their planet. So they go and basically go. Basically, Stephanie's father gives them a uh, kind of descriptor to where they are, and they decide, "No, nah, we're not going to do this. We're just going to go to the space fort." Uh, and basically, there are scenes of the commander of the officer, or like the commanders, getting really pissed off at them, uh, and then they all get smoked. Like all the normal grunts just get obliterated. Um, Fucking completely. So yeah. Um, so Dan and Stephanie uh, go to, to the fair, space. Were they forces. also in part going off of Paula's uh, intel? I think it was half that and half uh, the the thing that Stephanie was also going to. Yeah. Um, so they're going, and they go and go to the space fort, and they find a giant brain. Uh, they they find out that the Bacterian have captured Paul or Stephanie's father and turned them or turned him into a cyber brain, which is essentially uh, the do- uh, essentially what that means is they turned him into the final boss from Gradius One. Yeah. Uh, also, I, I feel with mentioning that this entire time up to this point. The voice had been guiding her to avoid getting shot as well and where to go and where to move. Like, it was very actively taking part. Yes. Um, so while this is going on, um, uh, Eddie, who is realizing what Paula is like, oh, we need to destroy this, uh, spa- this obelisk here. Just basically takes the Vic Viper and just, just sits it on the ground and just launches everything it can against it. Against this Moa head that's in the desert. Uh, also, what's great is during the uh, while this is going on, uh, while Paul's getting close to it, the Moa head does open its mouth and does shoot the donuts from the it shoots game. Shoots a donut. It shoots a donut and a singular donut, and I was deeply disappointed. Yes. Look, be glad you got one. Uh, so then. Uh, Eddie does end up destroying the obelisk, but oh no, uh, it turns out Paula was evil all along. And she was like, ha, ah, I got you to destroy the thing. That is the one thing that was preventing Gradius from being attacked by the Bacterian. Um, and then she turns into the salamander. Or a kind of salamander. She basically turns into one of those segmented dragon things. Turns into a dragon, yeah. Uh, which... Um, basically, that does not make Eddie happen or happy. Uh, and he goes in this tirade about why can't um, people like everyone is trying to do me. Uh, they're just playing me for fool like they did with the thing uh, in which uh, this produces the greatest line from this entire series. Uh, and I'm just going. So basically he's like, oh, yeah, uh, I, I guess. Um, why is it that everywhere I go, uh, I'm being treated like this and wish. Um, he says the line, and I, uh, I'm going to just read it verbatim uh, because it is certainly a thing. Let's see, I got here, got it saved here because it is a fantastic line, and that says, "Racism exists on every planet." With him looking very mm-hmm. contemplative. He's also like shaking his fists too, which you can't really see in that screenshot. Yes, uh, it is extremely stupid. 
And, and also, you're not you allowed. Image, you can see the forehead. Yes. Yes. Um. Uh, yeah. That that is what happens there. Uh, also, when this happens, uh, Dan and Stephanie. Uh, basically, no longer starts to hear uh, Eddie, or Stephanie's father's voice. Basically, it is he is now fully corrupt, uh, and Stephanie has to kill her father by doing the thing that you do in Greatest One. Shoot the bullet, patricide. You, you, you shoot the little thingies, and then it dies. And that basically wow. is the ending of episode two. Um, also, I should point out the ending of, much like in episode one where they showed uh, the kind of, that the kind of layout was looked like the level one of Salamander, um, the, endings, the ending for episode two is basically them going through the last level of Gradius one, like drawn out. Yeah. Yeah. I think two was specifically the episode where they did like a side shot. No, that uh, th- that's episode like, three. That's episode three. Is that? I took a Everything screenshot. Everything good in this series was it from three. Uh, <laughs> I took a... I, no, trust me. I, I went back and took a screenshot of it because it's really good. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's that's episode two. Um, that brings us to episode three, uh, which, yeah, that's the... It is the last actual, like, it's the last episode of the series. Also the last chronologically because this is... The, the episode title for this is Salamander Advanced Saga Gopher no Yabu, which is uh, Gopher no Yabu translates roughly into The Ambition of Gopher. Uh, that is the actual name, the subtitle of Gradius 2. God, I will never not love that terrible name. Uh, yeah. So, basically what this episode starts out with is that oh, hey, after the events of episode 1, they're like, oh, maybe we should form an alliance between Gradius and lattice in order to because we got this bacterian threat that's kind of dealing with us or dealing with this so why don't we go ahead and you know for, do oh man i wish that i took a screen scout or re- wrote down what the name of it because it's something very specific it's like the the gladys gradius friendship treaty or something like that uh, no it was oh god it that was sounds like it. Like no, it was it was something like friendship and protection treaty, something like that. It was incredibly stupid. It was but, really bad. But yes, um, so uh, with that, uh, basically, there's this big festival going on with it, um, and basically, there is a scene of. Lord British and the, I guess, whatever the head of Gradius is, signing this decor- decor- yeah. declaration, um, like giving them friendship or something. Um, they don't specifically say what. Um, but then they're like, oh, hey, there's um, uh, like there's like a party going on. Also, we forgot to mention that Lord British has these two assistants that are essentially, uh, look like they come straight from a Disney movie. Like they're the doting kind of like caretakers of the prince that is almost like almost like the retainer that is like that same kind of thing that's in like every kind of anime that has like a royal in it. They're also like the, those two Muppets, Wald- Waldorf and kind of, they, like if they if rather than them being incredibly sarcastic, they were just really stupid. Kind of. But yes, um, basically they're like, oh, hey, did you, what do you think of the Stephanie? Do you think you can marry her or something? And he's basically saying, I'll think about it. Uh, the thing is, uh, with that, uh, is that apparently Dan is trying to catch or come up with a scheme in order to get Lord British to try and marry um, uh, uh, yeah, Stephanie. We're, yes, we're trying to, to marry Stephanie. He was trying. It was more like he was trying to hook them up. Yeah, and that he basically did the old inviting both of them to the same place to see what would happen. Yeah. So uh, there's a scene of Lord British um, kind of catching the courage to, uh, I guess, actually ask stephanie's hand in marriage at like this pavilion with Dan doing the thing of hiding behind a tree like two feet away. It was more longer than that, but uh, 
uh, yeah, while that's going on, he's kind of eavesdropping and kind of giving commentary, like color commentary as it's going on. Also, Stephanie specifically went there because Dan had asked. Yeah. Yeah, so he's trying to set up this uh, kind of elaborate thing. Um, so, but the thing is that he kind of chokes and he doesn't, he doesn't bring up the courage, which is unfortunate because Stephanie gets kidnapped by a uh, space dragon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just all of a sudden space dragon just comes. Nope. Nope. You're mine now. What a right fucker. Um, so yeah, basically it was like, Oh, that's unfortunate. I guess we should do something about that. Um, so then you have, uh, Seems it's like okay. What are we going to do about that? Um, basically, Dan and Lord Bird are trying to think of ways of what to do. Also realizing that oh hey, if something were to happen to our main like the big important people while this is happening, that's probably not good PR. Yeah, and they just need to be they need to be cautious about this. Uh, also, while this is happening, you see uh, basically that uh, Stephanie has been kidnapped by the Bacterian, uh, actually particularly Paula. Um, has kidnapped her. Um, but before you actually see that it's Paula, you get this kind of weird in like internal vision that Stephanie is having of her upbringing, which is basically her mother is like, oh, hey, it's essentially something like, oh, hey, um, you hang out with your Senior. father too much. You're not, you're not being lady enough. You need to stop it wearing sucks. that spaceship. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a very much a t- sign of the times kind of thing. And then basically it's like her having dialogue for dad. It's like, oh, hey, mom says that I shouldn't hang out with, uh, like, be in spaceships enough. And, and I was like, oh, don't listen to her. Um, you should, like, go out in space. Something like that. Like this really weird kind of thing. Um, but then, uh, yeah, so once Astri is a vision, Paula appears and is like, oh, hey, uh, we are going to turn you into a cyber brain like your dad was. Uh, also, this is where you can see the, another form that the uh, bacteria take, uh, because the area that they take Stephanie is all crystalline. Like, there's all these giant blue crystals uh, that look very similar to, I believe it is level three of Gradius Two, which were basically just the crystal bouncing stage, which was really annoying to deal with. Um, so there is uh, that happening. Um, also, th- this entire scene is very uncomfortable. Yeah, because uh, also Stephanie is like stuck to this like this like kind of like was like brain like material like this very sticky like gooey. It was material. a membrane. Yeah, like a membrane kind of thing. Um, Some sort of like sticky membrane. Yeah. So she's like bound in that. It looks like if she took like her dress off, that she would actually just be fine. But she decides not to. But probably should get goop like other ways. But anyway, um, so yeah, uh, while this is going down, uh, they actually managed, I forgot exactly how, but they managed to f- track Stephanie down to, um, and they ev- inevitably find her. Um, and uh, they like, they rescue her, kind of. Uh, basically, the, the way. Well, it's because of the way they rescue her, which is the the great thing, which is basically uh, Stephanie is being lured to touch this giant crystal that is has her mother's voice. Uh, so as she's just also, about to she, t- go going back a little bit, when she was on the membrane, one of the crystals opened up and tentacles descended and it was really awful and uncomfortable. Oh, yeah. I forgot about that bit. Because, yeah, it's like the thing that, yeah, it it's Yes. Um, so there is also, so when that happens, they also, she is snapped out of the dream by, um, Dan and Lord British blasting the hell out of the thing that is holding her just with their Vic Vipers. They're just like this giant ass spaceship, just shooting everything they had again, like to like five feet away from her. No, it was specifically Dan who shot Lord British didn't shoot. So yeah, she got pissed off at Dan. Yes. So she's happy that they get uh, kidnapped or that she gets rescued. Uh, not in the way, though. Uh, so she actually uh, hops into Lord British's ship and they end up flying off. 
Uh, and this is where you get probably one of the better, like, so now it is just them. Uh, oh, one other thing I should mention that they saw in the dream. Paula points out a giant brain creature um, to Stephanie when she is captured. Uh, and that is Gopher, which if you are familiar with Gradius 2, it's the last boss. It's a giant ass head that has a brain exposed. Um, and that is Gopher, who is kind of the main bad guy of Gradius 2. Um, so then with that um, so with that uh, they actually try to escape this and in doing so they run into a bunch of enemies that you see from Gradius 2. You actually get a pretty decent rendition of the song Tabadachi from uh, Gradius 2 mixed in with the not great remix of Salamander music. Uh, this is also where you run into uh, the second boss I believe from Gradius 2, which is the giant eye. Uh, and this is where you get one of the dumbest camera shots in the entire thing. Because, of course, what every um, uh, video game adaptation thing has to do uh, is kind of like have the thing. It's like, oh, hey, it's like the video game. Uh, where you just see shots of back and forth of this eye getting shot in the, the cannon shooting. Uh, but what it ends up with is a side, sideways view of the ship flying towards the <laughs> eye. Uh, flying extremely slowly and really jankily. And, like, I see what also, they're... Tra- the, 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 the hands unable to touch it because it's in the right spot. Yep. <laughs> So it's actually they actually pull the thing like like that Doom movie did where it's like the first person segment. God, it looks not great. Um. So yes, uh, that is. There's that. So they end up destroying it and they end up flying out. Uh, but Paula realizes that they that she is leaving and is like, okay, we need to deal with these people now. Uh, so Paula merges with Gopher, and they. When they merge, they become this giant phoenix-looking bird. Um, <laughs> and basically, it is, it's is—it's the first boss of Gradius 2. Um, and it goes down exactly as easily. <laughs> yes, uh, but the thing is, is that when they first fight it, uh, they are having problems uh, because Lord British is bad at video games. <laughs> uh, yes, it's the thing. Because uh, you basically get a shot that is essentially... Okay, you suck at this. I'm taking over because you can't work with Dan enough. So they have like the thing where it's like, oh, Dan and Stephanie are basically they have been working together for so long that they work in tandem together. Like they can do maneuvers that him and or that Dan and Lord British can't because they are not familiar. Um, so with that, they kind of shoot a bunch of missiles at it and at the end they like oh we're gonna do a power capsule attack which basically turns into basically they kill it by doing a bunch of spread bombs which (laughs) oddly enough is one of the worst ways to defeat the first level boss of course it wouldn't be a video game movie adaptation without them doing the wrong strategy also but yeah so that's they defeat gopher and then they go back to lattice and then uh at the end uh, both Dan and Eddie go, or not Dan and Eddie, Dan and Stephanie go off to leave Planet Lattice um, because uh, turns out Lord British has given up on the idea of asking Stephanie to marry her because he realizes that Dan and Stephanie have such great chemistry and realize because uh, apparently he does not understand the concept of a business relationship. <laughs> well, no, he realizes that Stephanie has feelings for Dan is the thing. But she doesn't. No, she does, though. It's even hinted at at the beginning of the episode, because once again, she specifically said that she went to that spot because Dan had asked her to. Oh. And was looking for him. Oh, I I thought that it was something else, but yes. No, 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 Dan is an idiot. Dan doesn't give a shit. Dan is an anime protagonist, so of course he doesn't notice. So, yes. It's just a bit more subtle than in a lot of other stuff. So yeah, basically, and then Dan's like, oh yeah, I said, I, Dan's like, "Ah, yeah, I was trying to set you up with Lord British. And then basically, Stephanie's like, oh, okay, you're an idiot. And then it smacks him. Yeah, yeah, she gets pissed at him, because once again, he's dense. (laughs) So yeah, uh, that is the end of episode three. And Oh, you know, you forgot the last part in which 
because all right <laughs> all right yeah so at the very end there's a scene of lord british and his flunkies um trying to flying away from the planet and then the one of the supervisors is like oh yeah i see that you still have all the rings and the tiara and the like the stuff with there and lord british is like well i have that now so let's go uh put that to good use let's go find some ladies and then the ending is like well, yeah. oh no, well, I, i've like heard this planet's full of beautiful women or something like that and then the the flunkies are like oh what a playboy in like this anime kind of thing and then it ends and then just cut to credits yeah it's so fucking weird. cut to end of credits and then there's immediately an ad for the famicom edition of gradius 2 yup and oh, that was God. the salamander ova and that's the salamander ova <laughs> Uh, so we have realized that we have made, uh, we have gone back and figured out some things. Uh, we apparently missed some Eddie stuff. Uh, so Eddie was actually part of the original lo- uh, royal family of Lattice, but there was a coup and his family was ousted, which is why he was pissed at Lord British. But uh. after he dies, Lord British is, wow, this man is such a fucking hero. Uh, his family is officially recognized again and any of his family members can come back to Lattice. It is okay. like the laziest fucking thing. Uh, and yes, we have we have found what the name of that the treaty thing was. It was the permanent peace and friendship treaty between the planet Lattice and planet Gradius. Yep, I literally Perfect. went back through the OVA because I'm like, I know where this is, and I need to remember how bad this is. So yes, uh, that is the that is the entirety of the the Salamander OVA. Uh, also, if you were mentioning really quick just relative things here the first two episodes are 40 minutes of nothing and then 10 minutes of action the third episode's actually 20 minutes of like kind of character building that's still not particularly good and then 30 minutes of things happening yes so the third episode is actually somewhat decent as as much as this thing can be yeah but uh <laughs> yeah um so yeah um that that is that uh, one thing I think before we actually get into the ranking itself that we should kind of discuss is uh, there I think that is more prevalent or, or pr- that is more relevant to talk about is the relationship to the games themselves. Um, Gradius having as bare bones of a plot, really as it being a shmup has like the barest bones of the plot. Uh, they did not they did like the very basic kind of things you could do with this. Um, for one thing. There is no mention of options. There is no mention of any of the things that make Gradius Gradius. There's some mention of the Moai heads, but that's about it. Um, but yeah, other than that, there really isn't. There really wasn't much to work with. So I, I, I understand also, why the, they wouldn't. The weird thing is the Moai heads were a defense mechanism for the planet. Yeah. Also, the other weird thing is the the crystal form being the true form of the Bacterians. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I think that is enough talking about the Salamander OVA. I think we can now have heard enough that we can actually rank this thing. So In the garbage. Well, so yeah. this is our first... So, um, for those who are listening to this and are not familiar with uh, the... Uh, the That this is actually the sister show to a show called Retro Rank Rhapsody that I do on Twitch, uh, where we rank uh, these games and these things that we're talking about are, ga- are based on things that we have ranked. Um, so here we have a ranking system of which basically we give a whatever these mediums, we give it a score between well, a rank between 1 and 21, uh, which basically it is a color-coded scheme according to the rainbow with your violets being your what we consider mastercraft your this can't get any better it is just fantastic uh going all the way down to the red uh which at 21 which is don't even it's like it's not even fun to look at it's just don't even bother um so with that um with also with it being the rainbow scale the green is kind of your middling it's not great but not bad um so with that uh i think what we'll do is uh, also one other thing i should mention um so these lists these are going on two 
two specific lists. We have two specific lists with, for Media Delta with us. Uh, we have Resonance, in which we are talking about how how basically media that is produced to that is in reference to a game like this that it's a show that was based off of a game. Uh, you're if you're thinking of other things, things like the Super Mario Bros. Super Show, um, like the Sonic com or cartoons and eventual comics. Uh, things like that will show up in this residence list. And that's where we're going to place this. And this is actually going to be our first entry into here. So if I'm going to let uh, Carnival and Torpo kind of give their thoughts first in terms of kind of what kind of, with the color scheme that we have, what would you kind of say this deserves? Personally, I would say probably like 14, 15, maybe. Like, it's not bad. It's just kind of boring. Yeah. I I agree with that. I would. I was gonna probably see my range was saying between like sixteen would be my highest. I'd be giving it just because it's like I don't know. I feel like the third episode kind of redeems it at least a little bit, which is why I wouldn't want to put it too low. That's a fair point, but it's just it's kind of one of those things of like the first two episodes are so bad that you unless you're like. <sighs> I, d- I disagree. They're not really that bad. They're once again, they're just kind of boring. But like things True. do happen that are amusing at the very least. It's not like they're just a complete wash. That's it's just fair. overall, it's just a wasted time. I would then call it like fifteen. Then yeah, I think fifteen is a good because um, for reference, uh, fourteen is what is referred to as kind of met. It is the yellow um, portion of the rainbow. Uh, it is. It's not. It's. It has issues, but it's not necessarily terrible. Um, and fifteen is kind of the like the minus, but it's just uh, it's it is not... the it's the you need to drink more water yellow. Yes, yeah, yes. <laughs> it is not quite orange, but it is very much still in the yellow. It is not quite way past its prime, but it is getting close. Um, so yes, thank you for the. You need uh... to drink more water is my new Crayola crayon. <laughs> yes. Um, so, uh, let's go back to this re- residence list. Okay, so we have, we decided on 15, I think? Yes, 15. 15, okay. Yeah. So we have 15, and we have Salamander. Um, I guess this is on Media Delta Episode 1, and this is, was produced, I guess I'll just start the f- starting year, so I'll do, this is 1987. Um, let's do... Off for a sec so I can see. Let me just copy and paste this here. That. Um, we also now have uh, this is, in fact, released as an OVA. Uh, and so, what kind of, let's see, from the genre that we have, I guess this would kind of be sci fi. Sci fi. Yeah. Um, unabashedly so one other thing that we rank here is we have tones anime so space this, war yeah this would be space war which are basically robots and thing also one other thing um, to go through would you rank that you would rather watch this than actually play the games that this is based on I would 100% rather play, play the, the game. fucking game damn yeah <laughs> holy shit Okay, so we. Oh, uh, the games that. are actually pretty good. Is the thing. Yeah, they. I mean, they have, like, like the first couple Gradius games have definitely aged, but uh, yeah, it is still pretty good. They're definitely not bad. Um, and uh, I do want to note, like, I'm gonna put a thing for the amount of just the meat because I think that might be off-putting to certain people. There is so much meat. Um. So, uh, other things that we want to know is that we also want to give, we also want to call out uh, things like uh, whether or not it has good music, uh, whether or not the charm of it's really good, does it have good cinematography, is the writing good, is the action good, and is the art good? Or if you have any other specific comments that you want to put out. I can't can't believe it's going to be empty. Yeah, it's going to be empty, really, because other than, like, it's got bad pacing, and I don't know where we would put that in. Um, I think I think we have a snail that we can put that in a. But that's all I can really say about it is that its pacing is bad, but it doesn't stand out really in other, any other way. 
Yeah, I think that's yeah, probably the only good really for notable this. thing I would argue is just the character designs are pretty all right, honestly. Yeah. Um. Actually, I think we could. I think I do have a characters thing that I could put. So, um, I can put that there. And yeah, it's literally any letter. It would be a character. <laughs> yes. Anyway, I think that's probably good <laughs> for that. Um, so yeah, um, that's Salamander. Uh, that is the OVA that is based on Gradius. That was one of the things that inspired me to do this series because this thing's weird enough, and we're going to be showing a lot of things that are very similar to this. A lot similar to this. But I'm we just have... looking forward to the next one. Yes, so hang hang uh, in for we have one more episode well um to you listening at home there will be another we have uh next episode is actually kind of interesting because it is actually directed by the same person it has much different results which is weird because it's before this too yeah yeah it's like worse so yes um just uh hang on there uh, our next episode, we're going to be covering uh, Area 88. Um, so, what? with that, um, I think that's probably good to call this episode here. So, um, with that, uh, thank you all, or I guess, thank you for uh, listening to this episode. Uh, Torpo and Carnival, do you have anything uh, do you want to plug? Uh, hmm. Uh, the whole of this nightmare ship. <laughs> Sharf. Okay. Well, with that, I guess that's it for Salamander. Thank you all for listening to Media Delta. If you want to see the full ranking list for yourself, you can go to r3.ldp.life in your browser, and that will take you straight to the list. If you would like to watch Retro Rank Rhapsody, this show's sister series in which we play the games that the shows that we are talking about on Media Delta are based on, you can watch them be recorded live on Twitch at twitch.tv slash loadedpuzzlo. Episodes are recorded live at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Fridays, 2.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Saturdays, and 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Sundays. Or, alternatively, you can watch all episodes on YouTube by going to youtube.ldp.life. You can follow the show's Twitter by going to at HazeltownStory, or my personal Twitter at loadedpuzzlo. If you want to discuss the show of others, you can join the official Discord channel by going to discord.ldp.life in your browser, where you can also vote in polls to determine what episodes will be coming next for both RetroRank Rhapsody and Media Delta. Again, thank you all for listening, and I hope that you come back for the next episode. <laughs>